All right, Chris, we're going to look at the side view first. Now, I really like your game. I like your amount of power. I don't think you're developing your power in the right way, though. You're overworking to develop it. Now, you have your th thumb in the ball, correct? Okay. All right, let's go through the overall motion here. Five steps, absolutely fine. No issue. Lots of muscle in your swing. And you have too many shots where you fall out of the shot of the foul line. Now, this shot you didn't quite fall out, but out of body position. Upper body goes over, back leg comes up, lose the knee bend. That's a result of overthrowing, using too much muscle. Okay, so let's go into the motion here. In the stance, I wouldn't change a whole lot with that with you. You're kind of really back on your heels. Now that might just be a feel thing. Okay, I'd probably move this right foot up a little bit. When the right foot's back, it gets you all your body weight back on your heels. Okay. For what reason, though? Well, I felt when the feet were too close, I was too upright. Maybe I don't okay. Well, I mean, you're still pretty upright. Okay. It's just now you have a big angle back. You're leaning backward. If the weight's on the heels, you can't walk forward. So we'll probably see a weight shift as you start. The other thing I would do with you, I'd move the elbow back. The elbow's already at the front of the side. I'd move that back to about the middle to help create a little bit different push ray motion. Let's go into the motion here. You want to hold the ball steady through the first step. Let's see if you do it. There's your weight shift to get going. Okay. So you held the ball pretty steady there. That's not bad. Ball does move out a little bit. Some lifting there and really rigid. See how you're locked, but then your wrist is really cupped. Okay. I'm going to compare you. Let's use somebody with a decent amount of power here. I'm going to use somebody a lot smaller. Here. I'm going to use Rick Steelsmith. Not a big guy, but quite a bit of power. Okay. At the end of the step, his ball is right about waist or belt level. Notice he's not locked. You're really locked and really cupped. Okay. Part of the reason you're locked, you start with the elbow already forward. And then to have any motion, you're going to lock. Okay. <clears throat> so your ball is a little bit higher than his in relationship to the body. A lot of that's really the wrist cup. If the wrist was straighter, that ball would be a, a couple inches lower. And I don't care about the wrist cup, really. There, anyway. So kind of similar. No big differences right there. A couple inches. Okay. On his next step, his ball comes down into the swing and will get almost hip high in the back swing. Okay. On your next step, your ball doesn't come down right away. You carry it. Really, really late timing right there. Okay. That ball should definitely be more past your leg. So what was it about two inch difference one step ago is now a three or four ball difference. And you're really getting kind of collapsed with your upper body right there. And that's common when you kind of carry the ball, your body follows it. Okay. Now when you're late, your body has three different ways that it can catch up. None of them are conscious choices, by the way. One way, slower footwork, which I do see with you to some degree. The other way, pull your swing with muscle, okay, to accelerate. The other way, your body can keep your back swing low so it doesn't take as much time. Let's go into your fourth step. A lot of elbow bend there that you pulling. Look at it as the ball's butt high. It's right next to your body. His ball's butt high. Look at the gap. And I'm not implying you have a big butt, okay? <laughs> It's your body position, a lot of wrist cup. I mean, your wrist is 90 degrees in your swing, and you have a bent elbow. Okay? So, I agree. But look, the ball's almost the same height here. Right, you're on step four there. If I get him to step four. Okay? Yep, right at the top of the backswing. Let's see if you're at the top of the backswing. Right there, you're at the top of the backswing, so you're still late. Lots of wrist cup in the backswing. That's a very muscled motion. Okay. Now you're quite a bit taller than Rick, as are most people. Okay. <laughs> you look shorter there. Your upper body is really over. Okay. And you're late. Now, look at the height of your backswing compared to his. You throw the ball two miles an hour faster than he does. <laughs> okay. You're overthrowing. 
at the release point. Foot stops, ball passes it, great body position. That foot should stop right there. Let's see if it does. Yep, foot stopped. Not as good a body position. Popping up, okay, as a result of muscling. When you go from late to on time on the last step that you're pulling through, the more you pull through, the harder to stay down. Right. That helps with the balance, but your right leg is coming up because your upper body is going forward. Okay. Your body is smart. If your upper body is forward without a counterbalance behind you, you're going to fall on your face. Your body prefers that not to happen. That's not okay. Exactly. Okay. That's just your body trying to have a counterbalance. But you're like the rest of us. Your upper body weighs more than one leg, which is why you fall out of too many shots. Okay. So yes, ideally you want to keep the upper body more upright, back foot down, just like what we see with him. Okay. Even if we look at someone like Chris Barnes, again, I mean, yes, you have a higher rev rate than these guys, but they have more effective power. Okay. Upper body stays more upright, back leg stays down more. So you both have a basic line, you know, the upper leg through the spine, your angle is flatter because you're pulling, because you're late. Okay. Now let's talk about a push way shape. Okay. And we'll use seal spread for this. Kind of a good analogy for a push rate. We want everything nice and rounded. You know those big exercise balls that people use these days? Oh, yep. Big, yep. Okay. okay. Imagine your bowling ball is resting on top of one of those. A nice kind of rounded motion for the push rate, like a backward C. Not a big motion, but it's rounded. Okay. And see, that looks pretty relaxed and lazy. That's a ball speed... You know, mid-18, rev rate, upper 300. Okay. That's the shape of the push rate we'd like to see there. If we look at your push rate, we're not going to see quite that roundness. Yep. Exactly. And then, I mean, so you have a very controlled muscled push. And that sets you up for a controlled muscled swing. So you don't have much of a swing, but you have a really high ball speed. So you're using a lot of muscle, okay? So like I said, what I would do with you, I would change that shape of the push away. I would have the elbow back a little bit, get that wrist up a little bit more even with the elbow. So that would help develop the kind of out and around instead of that up and back, okay? And if we can relax that part, that should get you less late in timing and allow you a little bit more time for a backswing. So then you can actually generate ball speed with a swing instead of generating ball speed by throwing. Okay. Let's look at the next shot here. You're doing it the same every time, which I like. It shows me you're repeating the motion. But again, just really kind of muscled in the motion. So we're going to try to free things up a little bit. Right. But that's a result of having to catch up. Even in the backswing here, I mean, look at the, the wrist cup in the backswing. I mean, you're 90 degrees with the wrist. Good example of wrist cup here. I'm going to pull up Barnes because he starts cupped. That's simply a feel thing for him. So he starts cupped. When I get him to the backswing, he's not very cupped. That's a rev rate of 400. Okay. If I pull up someone like Robert Smith, more power than you. If I get him into his backswing, way more risk up with you. Okay. Look at the difference in body position. You're way over compared to his. And look at the difference in the height of the backswing. You don't see a whole lot of really effective pro bowlers with a high rev rate with low backswings. Okay. So we need to free that motion up a little bit. As you help less with your swing, the body position should kind of help itself. The more you help your swing, the more your upper body gets into that motion. Okay. If we look at position at the foul line, and you pop right up out of the shot. Yep. But again, not a problem, a result. Okay. So we're going to work on that start. We're going to get you freed up, get you a little bit less late timing. To help with what's happening on the foul line. I think that's when you're working backwards. I have to try and fix that. 
that. Right. That's a result, not the problem. Okay. Yep. Right. And then the more you try to fix that, it gets frustrating because it doesn't fix. <laughs> Got it. Yep. Because it's not the problem. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So we're going to work on that relaxed push rate motion. And you can do that at home with a mirror. Set up in the stance. You'll see your stance. You want to see that kind of out and around motion. Last time I did that, I banged my finger on the table and broke it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you make sure you have a clear path to take two steps. <laughs> right, okay, so lesson learned. <laughs> All right, let's look at the back view because there's something from the back view we're going to look at. First, we're going to look at swing direction, which I think will look pretty good, actually. So swing direction is pretty good, no, no big issue there. You push a little bit to the right. Okay, if I slow this down here, if I get you to push it, you can see how almost the whole ball goes to the right of your shoulder. Okay, so you're pushing a little bit to the right. The more you push it right, the harder it is to swing the ball to the right, actually. Okay. Now, let's look at step direction here. I'm going to get you to the foul line. Now, drifting is not a problem as long as you're consistent. I'm going to draw a line back with the boards there. So you drift, I'm just going to mark real about your left heel, about five or six boards. No big deal. If you drift consistently. I don't know that you drift consistently. Okay. If you look at the ball path of all ten shots here, let me throw up all these shots. Well, you have a couple of board difference at your laydown point, which tells us you're not drifting the same. Okay. If you lay the ball down on a different board, even and it can be really confusing because you might have the same angle off your hand. If it's a different laydown point, it's a different ball reaction because you're setting it down. Let's say you, you set one down on 17, you set one down on 19, it comes off your hand at the same angle. Completely different ball reaction. It's starting in a different place on the lane. Okay. So let's look at footwork and see what's going on with footwork. Let's use Barnes for footwork. He has a great step pattern. And his step pattern, I mean, Steelsmith, Boss, I mean, all these guys have basically almost the same step pattern. So same setup, no, no difference there. His first two steps, first step is straight, second step comes in. That helps clear a slot for the ball to swing. Let's see what happens with your steps. First step is straight, second step comes in. That's not a bad thing. Look pretty close right there, don't they? <laughs> yep. His third step goes pretty straight. You with that, so step goes sideways by about three to four boards. So you push right and you step left, that gets you out of body position. Okay. His fourth step will stay pretty straight. Your fourth step also is fairly straight in relationship to the other foot. Okay. Slide, we want that basically right in front of the step before the slide. Yours is. So most of your drift is step three. Yep, exactly. So what you would do to kind of clean this up, and I don't care about this for today necessarily, but this might be a good summer project for you to clean up that footwork because you don't drift exactly the same. And that's kind of important to, to be consistent with that. I would have you move over two to three boards left in your stance, but then have you feel like step three goes two to three boards to the right. Okay. Your third step goes left, which you can clearly see on the video. doesn't mean you feel that. <laughs> Right, so if left feels straight, straight's going to feel right. you got to play like a mind game with your muscles. Okay, But that would be something good to work on for you because I think it could clean up your lines. Because you kind of got out of body position on that third step. Yep, yep, exactly. Right, exactly. So about two to three boards in is what it would feel like. Well, your body position is kind of a result of the ball in the foot position. Okay. I mean, your push rate went to the right, you're stepping left. Okay, your body going over is a result of you carrying and helping your swing. Okay. All right, let's go to the finish on this one. Let's check body position and the finish on this shot. Same thing, kind of pop up right out of that shot. Okay. Let's go to hand motion release, which should look fine. Now, I do notice some of your shots, the track gets really high. Okay. Or sometimes you might even clip the thumb hole. Yeah, there's, there's okay. a couple of my, my 
Right, and that's a result of pulling. The more you pull, the more you get on the side. The more you're on the side, then you're going to come straight through it, and the track gets high. Okay. The muscle promotes early churn. So let's go into the motion here. Well, there you can see a push to the right. Most guys want to push just inside the shoulder. You're pushing outside the shoulder. Okay, so that's something you can do at home with the mirror also. Two steps and stop, mirror to the front of you. You want that ball to stay inside the shoulder as you push. Okay. Again, hard to feel, easy to see. At the release point, not bad. I mean, very low on the ball. That's where you have a high rev rate. Okay. Kind of thumb comes out, fingers come through. So good thumb finger separation. I'm not worried about your release. The shots where you turn early, that's the shot you pull harder. Okay. So even here, it kind of popped up. Had to fight for that bounce. Upper body goes down to the right. Back leg comes up to left. That's your counterbalance. If I pull up Robert Smith's release here, like I said, he has the most power of a one-hander. So he'll be nice and low on the ball also. Just a hair more behind it than you were. Okay. Same thing though, thumb comes out, fingers come right through. Yep, upper body more upright, back foot stays down. Maintains that knee bend. And that's more power than you. Not more speed, more power. Okay. So, kind of in a nutshell, you're working too hard. And that's what happens when you have a little bit of a timing issue, you end up using muscle. And like I said, there, I don't know of any high rev guys on tour that have really low back swings. Can't think of him. You'll think of it. <laughs> All right, so what? Small word. Now he doesn't use his thumb really. So some of the no thumbers might, but even his back is probably bigger than yours, and I bet you he's not near as late as you. More rounded. Okay. We want everything to be kind of rounded. Even the bottom part of the swing should be rounded. The bottom part of your swing is flat. Right. You're, it, everything stays really close to your body in the back swing. Okay. I mean, so right here even, the ball's below the shoulder. How heavy is your ball, 15? Okay. If you have a 15 pound weight in your arm and it's hanging below the shoulder, your arm should be straight unless you're using muscle. So you're holding 15 pounds with your elbow and your wrist right there. Okay? But that's because you have to accelerate the ball back because you were late. And when you help the swing, the body goes over more. Okay? And I don't have small wood on here, but I guarantee you his ball's further away from his body at this part of the swing. Even with out of this thumb. Now, I think he puts like part of his thumb in the ball, not the whole thing. But look at that. I mean, 45 degree bend in the elbow, 90 degree bend in the wrist. Right there. That's lots of muscle going on. Okay. Well, I don't know that you need that much cup. I mean, I showed you even Robert Smith doesn't have that much wrist cup. <laughs> okay. You would probably be more effective if you had a freer swing, if your rev rate was more like, you know, mid 400, ball speed a hair lower. Yes, that would be a little bit less rev rate, but way more effective power. Okay? So, yes, it's nice to have a high rev rate. The rev rate's one of the least important stats. Okay? So, all the guys on tour, all the high rev guys, every single one of them, they go on tour, the rev rate drops 10-15% within a year. Because it needs you to be more consistent. Even Robert's rev right now, if he, if he has a moment team over, his rev is probably more like low 500 now. It used to be upper 500. Yeah, exactly. Okay, the shot I have him on, that's like 560. Okay. But all those guys, Tommy Jones, all those guys have lowered their rev rate, but they're way, way more consistent. They still have high rev rates. Okay. We're talking like 10%. You're still going to be 450. 
<laughs> which is high. And okay. I've tried to get away from it in that cup. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. And it's going to feel like you're doing less. It doesn't mean you're getting less. It means you're going to work less to do it. Okay. So we're going to free up that swing. We're going to elbow back a little bit, bring that ball up a little bit, create that little bit more rounded, loose motion. I want you to feel a little bit more like the ball swings your arm, not your arm control what the ball does in the swing. Okay. All right. Let's stop the disc here.